Adobe Lightroom now has generative AI. Yes, I've been waiting for this, but is it any good? And how does it compare to Photoshop? In this video, we'll find out. And spoiler alert, it's not all amazing. So 12 months ago, Adobe introduced a generative fill feature to Photoshop and it was absolutely game changing. I made this video on generative fill at the time and since then I have used generative fill on many of my images and I absolutely love it. It's brilliant. I don't use it to add things into my images, but I do use it to remove distracting elements and being able to remove and replace those distracting elements of a photograph, such as exit signs, light stands, videographers, content creators was and is amazing, but it was only available in Photoshop until now. Lightroom is an incredible tool, but its biggest weakness has always been its ability or rather its inability to clone out distractions. So much so that I must admit, I thought it was an intentional decision by Adobe to keep Lightroom quite poor at that. So the photographers like me had to still use Photoshop, but that is not the case anymore because a few days ago, Adobe introduced generative AI to Lightroom as well. So let's open up Lightroom and see how good it is. Okay, so we're in Lightroom here, as you can see, and I've got lots of different RAW files at the bottom that I can just use to demonstrate things. These are all completely unedited RAW files. And I'm gonna start off with this one because although it seems relatively easy to remove Helen, sorry, Helen, um, as a distracting element, she's quite large in the frame. So it's quite a lot of the frame going to be replacing so let's try the new generative ai so to do that we go over here you can press q on the keyboard as a shortcut we're going to click on remove and as you'll see this is the new feature here generative ai we're going to just tick that and then we're going to use this tool just to draw around helen you don't have to be too accurate that's one of the cool things about this Okay, and now it's just as simple as clicking apply and generative AI will do its things. Let's see how it does. Remember before this Lightroom was really poor at removing distracting elements, whereas now it's really good. And if we zoom in, it is so difficult to see the join. It's done a brilliant job. So let's just move on to another image now. Let's try this one because in this example, we have a lovely videographer, but a videographer very much in the shot. So what will generative AI be able to do here? So let's press Q again, select our lovely videographer. Now, if you go over too far, let's do it by mistake. Okay, as you can see at the bottom there, we've gone over too far. We can simply come over here, click on subtract, and then just, yeah, just make it a little bit more accurate, the selection. And let's see what Lightroom can do this time. Yeah, that is absolutely brilliant. We've also got different variations. Don't know what's going on there. So we can click through. Just as in Photoshop, it gives you three different options. The first one, though, I think has done a great job. And again, before, after. This is amazing. And this is going to save so much time. I'm very, very impressed. And remember, it's only in beta as well. So it will only get better. Wonder if we can get rid of this registrar. So again, Q, generative AI. I want to say generative fill, but for some reason, Adobe is using a different name. So I'll try and stick with their name. Let's click apply. Now, one thing to be aware of, as I'm going to talk about in a few minutes, is that you can't do limitless generative AIs, Adobe is using a credit system. So I'll show you that in a second. But again, a really, really good job. So when it comes to the credit system, what I should have done there is use both of those selections at the same time. That would have cost me one credit rather than two. So bear that in mind. But what a brilliant job it's done. I am so, so impressed. Thank you, Adobe, for this. You're going to save me so much time. Okay, let's try this image now. What's the problem with this one? Oh, we've got a videographer at the back. I'm very, very aware that I'm in his video. Don't come at me in the comments. Okay, so let's press Q, go around here. This is a simple one, so I have no doubt that Lightroom will do a great job here. Click apply, and boom, what a brilliant job. And that has taken seconds. 
No more videographers. Another example here, a bit trickier this one. If we just lift up the exposure, we can see that Helen is there. So let's try again, Q. Again, I'm doing this really roughly. I'm not taking very much time at all in making these selections. And that's the great thing. You don't have to spend minutes or, or even longer going round really carefully. You don't need to do that. Ooh, we've got an odd reflection there. Is that in the second one? That's better. That looks good as well. Okay, let's close this. Yeah, that's done a brilliant job. Really, really good. So it wasn't the first selection, but we got there in the end. If we lift up the exposure, wow. Okay, let's move on to this one because this is another tricky one because the mag box is quite large in this frame. So let's do Q again, go around the mag box. And then let's ask Lightroom to do its thing. Wow, that is so, so good. That's good as well, as is that one. But I think I'm going to go with number one. Let's close that and let's zoom in. I mean, it's so hard to see the join, if at all. I mean, there is tiny signs of something going on there that isn't over here. But let's be honest, that is brilliant. If we zoom in even further, you can just about tell with because a bit of like a crosshatch thing there. But that's only when I'm zooming in really far. So again, before and after. Let's try this image. Where's the distracting element? Oh, it's a videographer at the back. I know I'm in his video. It's just a joke. And some of these people are my favorite friends in the industry. So don't worry. But let's press Q. Let's see if we can get rid of him. And this is a bit trickier. You would have thought it was a bit trickier because there's a table at the side there, which might not be easy. But having played with Generative Fill for a while already, I have a lot of faith that this is going to do a great job in removing our friendly videographer. And will it? Absolutely amazing. Let's look at number two. That's good as well. That's potentially the best one. Let's close this and zoom in. Again, can you see the join? This is crazy, crazy technology, and it's amazing. Again, before, after, absolutely incredible. Going to move on to this image now. This will be the last example before I show you an example where it doesn't do a very good job. Can we get rid of this person on the end? I'm sorry to this person. It's just for the purposes of research. And again, not done a very accurate selection, but the great thing is we don't need to. Ooh, not the best because of down here, but that one is really good. Really, really good. And just in case you're wondering, you can't really get rid of people in the middle, as I'll prove to you now. So if you are... <laughs> taking a group photograph and you're unsure whether you might need to remove someone in the future, I'm saying no more than that, then put those people at the ends because if they're in the middle, it's not ideal. I don't know what is going on there or there or there. So remember, if there is a possibility in the future, you think you might be asked to remove someone from a group photograph. When you're taking that photograph, Put them at the end. It'll save you a lot of time. So strangely, this is the image where Lightroom seems to struggle. And the reason I say strange is because I would have thought this is one of the easiest ones because it's quite obvious what the background behind the Magbox and Helen is. However, if I ask Lightroom to remove Helen and the Magbox from here, then at first glance, you think, oh, that's done a really good job. However, when we go in close, you can see a clear line of messy sky compared to what should have been there. And there it is. You can very clearly see the join in this example. And that's not just a one-off. If I look at the other variations, we can see the join there as well. So it doesn't seem to be great at skies yet. But remember, this is a beta feature, so it will get better in the future. Now, I mentioned this earlier in the video and something you need to be very, very aware of. Generative fill and generative AI is not completely limitless. You can't just use it infinite amount of times because if you go into your Creative Cloud account, you'll see that you have a monthly generative credits. And you can see here how many credits you've got left. Now, to be fair, 250 
credits or uses of generative fill a month. I think he's very generous and chances are you're not going to go over that. But just be mindful that you can't do limitless selections of generative AI. So what I would suggest when you're in Lightroom is rather than doing lots of individual selections when you're using generative AI, use them all at the same time. That should, I think mean that you only get charged one credit rather than five or six. What I'm now going to do is a direct comparison between Lightroom AI and Photoshop Generative Fill. We're in Photoshop here, and this is the example I've just exported from Lightroom that we did earlier in the video, which again, I think is absolutely amazing. Helen was here, but you couldn't really tell where she was when we just scanned around because it's such a good job. Okay, so let's see the original JPEG and let's use the lasso tool to go around the element that we want to remove. I should just say that I actually prefer the process of doing this within Lightroom. It's, it's much nicer. So let's see what Generative Fill will do. I'd expect it, as I'm sure we're going to see, to be exactly the same, more or less, or as good anyway, because it's going to probably use in the same engine. Yeah, again, a brilliant job. I dare say it's slightly different. It is, but they're both absolutely amazing. So there doesn't seem to be a reason to use one over the other when it comes to the accuracy of what you end up with. So again, this is the Lightroom version and this is the Photoshop version. Let's now see if Photoshop can do a better job with the example where Lightroom struggled. As you can see here, it's very, very obvious, unfortunately, where the selection was made or the replacement area was. So let's now go into the original JPEG. Let's go around Helen again. As I mentioned, chances are it's gonna be exactly the same because I'm sure it's using the same engine, but we might as well just see because it's a question that I'm sure will get asked. Ooh, no, there is a clear difference. Photoshop wins. There is Lightroom, and there is Photoshop. Lightroom, Photoshop. So maybe we're not quite getting rid of Photoshop just yet. So although, as you can see, generative AI isn't perfect, it is still a massive step forward for Lightroom, and it will save photographers so much time because we now don't have to continually go back to Photoshop to remove the distracting elements of our photographs, and that's brilliant. And I have no doubt that in a year or two from now, generative fill will be even better, which is pretty amazing, but also quite scary at the same time. So as always, I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you've got any questions about anything I've done in this video, please let me know in the comments. Thank you again for watching and I will see you next time.